Hey everybody, it's Jake, and um, last time I talked about Terraform, I talked about, you know, like, what is Terraform, but I kind of wanted to dig a little bit into more of why you would use Terraform and how it differs from other tools um, before I get started in actually building some stuff. So, um, one of the things that's important to know is um, I have a DevOps background, and DevOps, kind of the way that it came in to be... Um, you know, there was just so many manual things being done, people doing a lot of like racking hardware and setting up networking and then, you know, pat installing the operating system and patching the operating system and inevitably somebody would miss something, you know, or, or they would make a mistake or there'd be a typo or something <clears throat> and you'd have all these servers. So when developers toss their code over to the ops people to install stuff or to run it on there then you'd have code having like a bug on one machine but it wouldn't have the same bug on another machine but then it might act differently on a developer machine and that caused a lot of problems and so you know uh, to make a long story short like devops became a thing and infrastructure as code became a thing where you could declare your infrastructure and have it all be consistent stable the same everything versioned is kind of nice right so um I won't really get into what is infrastructure as code, but I think it is important to understand that there are different levels of infrastructure as code, and some of you guys are going to disagree with me, but um, ad hoc scripts are infrastructure as code too. So it's it's entirely possible to have a part of your infrastructure being run on an ad hoc script, and those scripts get really messy. They can get long. Um, inevitably you know if there's a patch or a change or something gets deprecated or whatever then you know you got to update your scripts and all that so using a tool kind of um kind of circumvents that and that a lot of it is standardized you still have to update things and whatnot but um installing packages um on an operating system and configuring things is totally done with ad hoc scripts before you know um orchestration tools and um not really work well maybe some orchestration but more like config management tools and things like that came into came out of the scene so for config management tools the main ones you're going to look at are like um chef puppet ansible and maybe salt stack so config management tools they're all kind of designed to manage existing servers um, or instances in the cloud and so what the argument you hear is that like well you have things that are used for deployment and then you have things that are used for configuration um, of deployments that already exist and that's also not true um, because like ansible for example you can deploy things with ansible um, you may not be able to do what you can do you know like puppet can't do what ansible can do in that particular arena but um, it's, it's just worth noting that there are exceptions to, to all of these blanket statements about what config management can't do. Config management is very powerful. Um, it kind of forces you to use predictable structures. Um, you've got item potents. You've got uh, different distributions and things like that you can run. But uh, being able to template out your, your stuff and, and just, do, you know, go change all these existing servers is super powerful and that's kind of what we're talking about when i talk about config management now server templating is different so that's when we talk about like packer vagrant or even docker where we're saying hey i want to build an image right so if you're talking about builds you know that's one tool so if you're going to build like a AMI in AWS and you want to use Packer for that, that's great. That's like a, a perfect thing that you could do uh, or it's one choice, right? Um, and you can do the same thing with Docker with how you do your containers and all that stuff to figure out which kind of software and everything goes on it and then save it as a Docker image, you know, or a Packer template and be able to, to, to manage your builds, right? So that's kind of, instead of configuring a bunch of servers, you're essentially declaring what it is that you want the server to look like right um so then the next part you know you've got um orchestration tools so this is where you get into like um 
Kubernetes and uh, some of these other tools that are out there. I'll think of some off the top of my head as I'm going, but um, server templating uh, is great for VMs and containers, but once it's like done, um, you need something to manage. Well, what happens if one goes down? Um, how many should there be? Do we need failover? Do we need high availability? And so templating something is great and using config management is great, but now we're getting to the point where we need to orchestrate what, what exists and make sure that, you know, we always have like however many, like three servers up running all the time, you know, and, and you, that's, that's really where orchestration comes in. So, um, the main the main tool you're going to you're going to use for that at least for the purposes of what I teach people is is really just focus on kubernetes there's a lot of stuff out there but i think that you'll you'll get the gist of everything if you do that um, and then the last thing is uh, provisioning tools and this is where terraform and cloudformation come in um, there's some other openstack heat i think uh, how it does the same thing, but this is where you're talking about actual provisioning. So like the building of things uh, themselves with the servers themselves. So, I mean, you can build servers, but you can also declare like, Hey, I want this uh, script to run. So like for Amazon, um, I need this user data script, this bash script to run, you know, on boot, install this, install that. So, you, and you can combine them. You can absolutely like, you could take a Packer template uh, of an AMI, and then have that AMI, um, that, that ID referenced in a Terraform file. So Terraform does your actual build, but Packer maybe is what you use to manage. Um, um, well, I shouldn't say Terraform to build. You, you're going to use Packer to build your image in Terraform to actually go out and provision that, that resource. Um, so anyway, so that's kind of... Um, some very broad generalizations about categorizing where all that where all that fits. So generally speaking, um, to summarize, you 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 have infrastructure as code, right? And that could mean several different things from an ad hoc script that somebody has in a, in a data center that's 20 years old to you know Terraform and everything in between it. But there's so many different tools depending on where you are in that in that infrastructure stage, whether that's, um, you know, building images and templates or whether that's using config management tools to configure, you know, those, those instances once they're running or using orchestration tools once things are running to make sure that you have the number of things that you want and that, you know, they're healthy and that you're monitoring them or something like Terraform or CloudFormation where you're actually going through and, provisioning something so it, there's there's so many gray areas in between that um you can use many of these tools for a lot of the same things and there's a lot of overlap so really what it comes down to is what makes sense for your company what are they currently using what are the skill sets of the people that are already there and um you know cost and some other things like that but but it just does it make sense for your architecture, I guess, is the, the big question. So the basics of, of that whole conversation, I think um, that that would cover it. So if you have any questions about um, how any of that works or what the difference is between of them or, hey, I want to use this with this. Is that OK? I mean, go combine everything and see. You'll find that if you start using too much stuff, it's just overkill. So that's why a lot of people do like just Ansible. And because Ansible can do your templating, it can do your provisioning, it can do your uh, state management, configuration management, like all that stuff, inventory, um, dynamic inventory, all that stuff. And it's all YAML, which makes it even easier. So um, at the end of the day, I think just do what makes sense. If you're trying to find a job in IT, uh, just learn all of them. I don't think salt stack is super important to learn for a new person. Um, if you're in a shop that needs to use it, then hey, go for it. But it's probably better if you're looking at config management, for example, to learn Chef, Puppet, or Ansible. Um, if you're doing infrastructure as code provisioning, I would look at Terraform and CloudFormation. If you're looking at templating, I would look at Packer, maybe Vagrant. Um, if you're you know, using a lot of HashiCorp stuff, and you can go with Vagrant, that's fine. Um, for all the 
scenarios, definitely learn Docker. And then for orchestration, I would just stick to Kubernetes. Um, there's other stuff out there, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, and I mean, and I mean, even Google Cloud is is moving away from from Docker. Uh, AWS is is moving is moving or has moved away from Docker. Um, so, and I think there's what is it Sierra.io that they're using now. Yeah, anyways, it changes all the time. But all that say, as long as you understand how it works and you know the basics and you have some experience with orchestration, config management, provisioning, and templating and builds, uh, I think you'll be I think you'll be fine. So, um, so then why would you use Terraform to answer the question from the beginning? I think it would make sense to use Terraform if you need a tool to do provisioning. And I think it would make sense if you have people there that that know Terraform. And it would make sense if you don't want to get locked into a specific cloud um, because it is cloud agnostic. It makes sense if you have a hybrid landscape and you need to do on-prem and cloud stuff. Um, and you can just have one tool to, to, to manage all of it. Um, Again, this is for provisioning only. Um, if you if you have stuff built and it's very non-ephemeral, right? So like SAP workloads, for example, where that server just needs to live forever, then you know maybe config management makes more sense. So in that case, I would not use Terraform, but for a lot of web-based um, applications uh, where servers go up and down and get replaced and you have auto scaling and all this other stuff. And yeah, something like Terraform might make sense. So anyways, uh, so yeah, if you have any questions, let me know and I will see you in the next one.